My name is Chad Williams, and today we're going to talk about hierarchical regression. So what this means is we're going to be comparing different regression models to each other now. So is one regression model better than another? With hierarchical regression, what we have is nested models, which means we have a model, and then we have a second, more complex model, and we make it more complex by just adding another feature to the model. And what that will look like in this video is we're going to have two factors, and in our simpler model, we're just going to have each main effect. And in our more complex model, we're going to also add the interaction effect. And we're going to compare the two models with that. So here our design is going to have two different factors, each with two different levels. So we're going to do this both with normal multiple regression, where we have four different groups, as well as with linear mixed effect modeling, where we have one group with four different conditions. So, Let's start off with our data. So as usual, we need four different distributions. I'm going to use the rnorm function. We're going to have 50 participants. And let's just put a mean of 10 and a standard deviation of 2. And then that's just the first one. And then here we have, let's say, 15 and then 2. And here what we'll have is 50 and then let's say 12 and then two. And then finally what we have is 50 and let's say eight and then two. So those are four different distributions. Now again, we have two different factors here. So let's go factor one equals. So what we need is we're gonna sort what we're gonna do in a sec here, which is repeat both negative one and one 100 times. And so what that gives us is negative 1 100 times, then positive 1 100 times. Easy enough. Factor 2 is going to be very similar, but we're going to do it half the amount of time, so 50 times. Then we're going to repeat this whole thing twice. And we'll see what that looks like in a moment here. That just looks like this here. We have negative 1 50 times and positive 1 50 times and so forth. Finally, for our within subject design, we're going to need our subject IDs. So we're going to go 1 to 50. Now we're not going to actually need this subject ID for our between subject design with linear or multiple regression, but that's okay. We're going to use the same data set for both. So if we run this, what we get is we have our scores on the left and we have our factor one, factor two with their levels. So negative one and negative one, negative one, positive one, positive one, negative one, and then positive one, positive one. And finally, we have our subject ID when we're doing linear mixed effect models. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a simple and a complex model here. So let's start off with the simple model and we're gonna just use linear regression, so LM, and we're gonna go scores by factor one plus factor two. And then we're gonna add our data structure in there. And that gives us a linear regression. And if we look at this, what we see is just our two main effects of factor one and factor two. So this is our simple model. Our complex model is gonna have the same thing, but we're gonna do an interaction as well. So we're gonna change this to complex model. And instead of this plus, what we're gonna do is just put it times. In another video, I talked about how if you just do this factor one times factor two, it'll automatically add the main effects. And that looks like something like this. where we have factor one, factor two, and the interaction, which is different from our first model, our simple model, because it just has factor one and factor two, but no interaction. Now, let's compare these two models. Are they significantly different from each other? And it's very simple how to do this. We're just gonna put ANOVA, simple model, comma, complex model. And then what we get is this output where we are doing a test to compare the two models. So what we have is our residual degrees of freedom 
our residual sums of squared, our degrees of freedom comparing the two models, our sums of squared, an f value, and then finally our p value. So we can report this easily like this. So we have our f, our 1, 196, because we're comparing the models here, equals 239.90. Then our p is less than 0 0.0001. So what that means is our more complex model is significantly different than our simple model, which indicates that we should include our interaction effect because it is useful. Now, let's do the same thing, but with linear mixed effect model. So what we need is our LME4 package, as well as the LMER package or I should say LMER test package, that one there. So let's make sure we run those. And then we're gonna have our simple LME model, which equals LMER scores by factor one plus factor two plus our random effect of one vertical bar, subject ID. And then we need to add our data structure, so like that. And there we have our simple LME fit. Now, a warning comes up, but I've made up all this data, so I'm not gonna worry about warnings here. And if we wanna check that model, we can see it right here. Perfect. Now, just like the other one, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a complex model with an interaction effect. Then we're gonna go Nova, complex LME. And just like we saw before with the multiple regression, we have our model that's simple here. And then we have our complex model here and we have just two main effects in our simple model, but an additional interaction in our complex model. And it's the exact same process where we're just gonna put ANOVA, simple LME, comma complex LME, and then we will see this. Now it's a chi-squared test, but essentially we get the same idea. So this is the number of parameters per model. And then we have our AIC, BIC, log likelihood and deviance, which are different ways of assessing models in themselves. And then we have a chi-squared test with the degrees of freedom one, because there's one additional parameter in the more complex model, as we see here, this one's six and this one's five. And then our chi-squared test with a p-value as well. So again, our complex model is significantly different from our simple model, which means it's useful and we should use it. We can write this out just like we did before, but now we're gonna be using a chi-squared test, so I'm not gonna do it too well in R here, but that should be chi-squared, of course, so use the chi symbol and then the superscript two. And then here, we're gonna put degrees of freedom one, and then it depends how you report it, but often we put n equals 50 in our case, because we have 50 people. Um, some people report this slightly differently, but that's how I do it. And then we have our chi-squared result, which is 160.55, and with a p-value with, again, less than 0 0.0001. And there you have it. We have hierarchical regression in both a dependent samples design as well as a repeated measures design, where we're using both multiple regression and linear mixed effect modeling, respectively.